Good morning, church. Let me read a passage that is selected for this coming Sunday. It's from the Wisdom of Solomon. For neither is there any God besides you whose care is for all people. For your strength is the source of righteousness and your sovereignty over all causes you to spare all. For you show your strength when people doubt the completeness of your power and you rebuke any insolence among those who know it. Although you are sovereign in strength, you judge with mildness and with great forbearance you govern us, for you have power to act whenever you choose. Through such works, you have taught your people that the righteous must be kind and you have filled your children with good hope because you give repentance for sins. The lectionary doesn't give us a lot of exposure to the apocryphal texts that appear in some editions of the Bible, but it is an optional reading this Sunday. I was drawn to it as we continue to live in a world that feels at once adrift and socially unhinged while quarantined in time and space. This short passage resonated for me around the word power and how we are experience it or the lack thereof in our world and in our spirits today. Many of us feel very powerless as the CDC admonishes us about our behavior. And if we are of a certain age, how often and where we should congregate. Many simply rebel and say that their civil rights are being violated. They aren't, of course. What is being violated is our misplaced sense of our own power and our illusion that we are only in this world on our own behalf. The author of Wisdom faced the same questions around God's power that we often face as we look at the state of the world, its sufferings, sacrifices, and sorrows. Even Jesus in Extremis once questioned God's power by quoting Psalm 22, 1, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? If the Son of God could experience an absence of divine power, we should not be surprised when we lack a sense of the presence and power of our Lord. We see power used and misused on a daily basis in the political and economic realms. We also see it used and misused in social situations where power is brokered and shared based on income, good looks, or families of origin. We can even see it in groups of Christians where fear replaces faith and the need for control replaces the need for dependence on God. If we are completely honest, one of the reasons we may not immediately perceive God's power in our lives is because God employs power to accomplish his perfect will in our hearts and lives. If we are reluctant or unwilling to completely give ourselves over to that reality, we will likewise not be able to manipulate God's power to work our will in our lives. The urban legend about Harry Houdini tells me almost all I need to know about my lapses in faith in God's power in my life. Harry Houdini, the great escape artist, earned his fame by escaping handcuffs, prison cells, and all manner of contraptions designed to confine him. He boasted on numerous occasions that no jail cell could hold him. He had never failed. He always escaped. Urban legend says that on one occasion, Houdini entered a cell as he usually did, but after two hours of infuriating failure, the lock would not give way. The great Houdini had finally failed. Why? What had gone wrong? The guards had forgotten to lock the cell. The only place the door had been locked was in Houdini's mind. His power had failed because it was based on a false assumption about his circumstances. After decades of being a Christian, it is not a little embarrassing to admit that many times the power of God is more concept than reality in my life. 
That is not to say that I have not experienced God's power in my life because I have, and in extraordinary and clearly miraculous ways. Each of us could list any number of examples of God manifesting his power in our lives. But I am not in charge of how and when God's power is made manifest for me. My part is only to remain faithful and to pray for God's will, or failing that, to pray for the will to want God's will. While I can't pick the lock on God's power, I can comb scripture and find that power unleashed in so many ways for God's people, sometimes even before they have become God's people. Scripture is an anthology of the power of God to change lives and cultures and all manner of outcomes. Jesus promised that we would receive power, see Acts 1 verse 8, not necessarily that we would feel powerful. God's power is shorn up in us to wield on behalf of God's kingdom and for God's people. And so as we take each next step in our faith, it is God's power that lifts our feet and empowers the outcome of our step. That in turn increases our faith and offers us strength in times of difficulty. Philippians 1.6 says that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. The doxology from Matthew's gospel ends with this, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. May we always experience the grace to rest in the certainty of God's power in us and for us. Amen.